in case people are joining early. And I'm going to. So thank you for joining everyone. And this week, we're really happy to announce our partner, WW Pass, who has a really fantastic technology that enables companies to not only authenticate, strongly authenticate users, but also to even head off the need to enter an identifier like a username. And at, at Glue, we're, we really support the idea that, that, that third parties and partners are going to be able to use the Glue server to, um, to integrate their own creative ways to authenticate um, end users. And we, you know, we we made a conscious decision to to really to support this interception script mechanism that allows you to implement you know complex multi-step uh, workflows for authentication. And WW Pass has done a great job writing one of these. And this script will be available in our GitHub and should be available in the open source distribution um, if you want to select it. Um, it should be built in. So a demo is worth probably a lot more than my description of this. Um, so, uh, and I'd like to hand it over to Kirill and Tim to provide a, a quick overview of the solution and, and a quick demo. Um, thanks guys and welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mike, uh, for this uh, great introduction and the opportunity to engage with the public alongside with Glue. Um, and hi everyone. Uh, allow me to start with a brief in company introduction. Uh, WWPass uh, Incorporation uh, has been in the market of cybersecurity for uh, more than 10 years already. And, uh, we have offices across Europe um, and the US, and we continue to grow. Um, you can check, by the way, everything on our website, which is uh, www.pass.com. So um, I'm Tim Brewer, and uh, I'm a business development executive. And uh, today I'm here with my colleague, Kirill, uh, who is actually one of the creators uh, of the technology we are going to present today and discuss. Um, before we start, um, uh, I just uh, wanted to mention that we're here not only to discuss single sign-on, uh, something we already know, but uh, also one of the most important, uh, I would say, and pressing issues in cybersecurity industry, um, which is um, stolen credentials. And the statistic shows that uh, the number of phishing attacks uh, in 2020 increased at least tenfold and uh, stolen credentials and logging uh, credentials are still the number one target. So basically, uh, WWPass just followed the market demand and uh, created the technology that protects from these types of attacks simply by design. So we eliminate usernames and passwords as your primary credentials. Uh, just as simple as that, though we also increase uh, convenience and UX uh, tremendously by utilizing your mobile phone as, a, uh, as your digital ID key to many doors. So, uh, hold on, I'll switch the, yeah, that's how it works. So um, I'm really uh, glad to see these number of uh, attendees today. Uh, and uh, I thank you for your time. And uh, I hope you're, uh, I, I, I'm sure you're all um, professionals uh, in your business and uh, cybersecurity in particular. And uh, uh, we all know that um, passwords are weak and, uh, but sometimes though uh, companies utilize it, but uh, sometimes we uh, also use second factors to strengthen our authentication. Uh, but does it really work? And uh, I just wanted to mention that I'm sure you all know that uh, no matter how many additional factors you have, you always start with the username as your, uh, well, basically email address yeah? and uh, the credential that everybody knows. And this is the main problem. So uh, we would like to address the main question to you today. Why don't we just get rid of usernames and passwords? Just follow me here. Uh, well, if you do not have human readable credentials, you have, well, no phishing and no data breaches. Now, if you do not have passwords, if you do not use passwords, um, 
you have no resources spent on heavy administration. Is a, uh, in the result, you have well, it's quite a cost-efficient solution. Yeah. And uh, with our great UX uh, and actually convenience, um, you just uh, all you have to do is just scan the QR code with your key, which is your mobile phone, and it's uh, uh, easily self-revoked and uh, uh, self-managed. So basically, you can manage everything within the app, which makes uh, users happy. So basically, you see uh, you have strong um, uh, security, you have cost-efficient solution, and happy users. What else do you need? And um, plus, everything is uh, open source and uh, very easy to install. But let us take a look under the hood. And um, I will give the mic to my colleague, uh, Kirill, because I feel like I'm talking here too much already. OK, thank you, Tim. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. And thank you very much for taking the time to attend this webinar. Um, I'm going to tell a little bit more uh, about the WWPAS authentication and data encryption technology. And I'm also going to show a quick demo of how WWPAS authentication can be used together with Glue uh, just to combine strong and convenient authentication with endless integration possibilities of Glue. Well, first, and I cannot stress this enough, WWPAS is not a 200 second multi factor authentication solution. We don't try to add some ambiguous authentication factors on top of the existing username and password based logins. What we developed is actually a completely independent and self sufficient system. Uh, again, the essential thing about WWPAS authentication is that it doesn't rely on human readable credentials such as usernames, email addresses, or passwords. Uh, instead, we start authentication with something you have, the possession factor, which can be your smartphone, or we also have a hardware token option. Uh, I think one of the main issues with usernames and password is that it almost like they were invented with a specific intention to compromise your privacy. When you enter your username, and I bet your username is your primary email address most of the times, mm, you pretty much let everyone know who you are even before completing authentication, right? Uh, this not only allows multiple services to link your activity between them, but also makes life so much easier for hackers. <clears throat> when one application or website you use gets hacked and leaks your password, it is extremely easy to use this password with other websites using your email address as a username because people do uh, reuse passwords and we all know that. So basically in WWPass, we believe that the entire concept of human readable credentials is ridiculous. And <clears throat> That's why we've introduced a better concept, the concept of protected user identifiers or PUIDs. Uh, PUIDs basically are the results of multiple mutual authentications between your WWPass key, WWPass itself, and the application that you are logging into. And your PUID is always different for each application you use. There is no way to link your activity between them. Uh, Tim, next slide, please. Yeah, I'm trying. Oh, okay, yeah, that's okay. it. So uh, from the end user standpoint, authentication always looks the same. You scan the QR code, the WWPass authentication QR code. You scan it with uh, your WWPass key app, or you can click login with WWPass button if you're logging in using your smartphone browser and such. So once you do that, WWPass key asks you to approve authentication and it shows you the name uh, of the application you're logging into. And after that, uh, WWPass authenticates your smartphone. Remember the possession factor thing I was talking about. And then it can ask uh, you to enter your PIN as an additional authentication factor, or it can use biometrics on your device. And non-security critical apps uh, may choose to skip the last step, which makes authentication just faster. Uh, once everything is completed, the website automatically logs you in. So I think enough talking, let's see it in action, all right? Uh, shall, I, shall I stop sharing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, just a second, please. Mm -hmm. Need to find the right window. Okay, here we go. 
Mm. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Ah, great. So uh, this is our corporate uh, Glue server instance that we use daily to access things like Zoom or uh, Google Apps. Uh, and <clears throat> I'm about to log in here uh, using my WWPass key. As I said, I'm just scanning the QR code, approving the authentication. Uh, then it's going to do its biometric stuff. And then um, something here happened. <laughs> um, sorry for that. Normally, normally that doesn't happen. Let's try again. Yeah. So oh, the page open too long. Yeah, I think it it, it was there for ages. <laughs> so uh, since I'm an admin user, I can show you how everything uh, is configured inside. Uh, actually, nothing really special here. We have an interception script that uh, basically does all the authentication. Uh, it has a few options. You can specify your certificated key files, which are basically like API keys for our SaaS service. Uh, you can choose not to use PIN or biometrics during authentication. And you can also um, have different uh, initial binding options, like uh, you can bind your keys with email addresses, like verification messages. You can use another key to buy your key, so you can have multiple keys bound to the same account. And you can also uh, bind your key using your existing username and password combination, which works great uh, when you need lots of people to switch to a new authentication method uh, without any heavily admin system administration work involved. And I think that's pretty much it. Another thing uh, that I would like to show is, um, if I go to users and manage people and I find myself, okay. Here is my PUID at the bottom of the screen. And this is, PUI, uh, this is the PUID that uh, comes as a result of uh, double double pass authentication of my key, this particular instance of glue. Uh, and uh, I can remove it. I can remove it uh, so that the next time I'm trying to log in with my key, uh, it won't let me in. So if I log out, right, and try to sign in again, just a second, please. It asks me to bind my key to an existing account, right? And uh, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to bind with my uh, username and password. Is it the one-time uh, procedure? Uh, yes, this is one-time procedure. And of course, usernames and passwords can be completely disabled for those who already have WWBus keys bound to their accounts. and. This is exactly how the end users are going to migrate uh, from uh, username and passwords to WWPass authentication. So it basically involves no work from system administrators whatsoever. So I'm clicking bind and it should bind my account and let me in automatically. Yeah. So now if I log out, I can log in with my key again. I mean, just in seconds. So that's pretty much it. Um, I think, can you show the next slide, please? Yeah. Uh, for sure, just a second. By the way, uh, the interception script uh, can be deployed basically into almost any existing Blue instance. Uh, 
Uh, I believe at some point it's going to be a part of open source blue distribution. And we also have a, uh, another um, project on GitHub that contains the script, the uh, standalone script, the instructions, and all of that stuff. You can try it yourself. It takes like, maybe an hour for an experienced Glue user to, to deploy and test the script. Um, so uh, just a quick recap, WW pass enrollment procedure. We have a uh, number of options. We have three different options uh, implemented for, uh, for, for Glue. It's binding with usernames and passwords, binding with uh, email verification messages, and um, you can also bind your key using another key, which can also be convenient. Uh, team, next slide, please. So, um, frankly speaking, this all looks very simple, but actually, the technology is backed up by a number of quite sophisticated uh, things, like strong multi-factor authentication using uh, using modern uh, cryptography algorithms, like secure data storage. Uh, we also do client-side data encryption. This is not specifically with Glue, but we can uh, implement projects where some client-side cryptography is needed. Like for instance, if you need to encrypt some document inside the browser uh, and things like that. Also, uh, unlike many others, we have facilities for the end users uh, that allow them to do um, key revocation and key restoring. Uh, in case of the WWPass mobile app, this is um, this can be done right from the app itself. Uh, basically, on the right of this slide, uh, you can see different authentication scenarios with WWPass key. But I seriously doubt, doubt looking at pictures is a good idea to learn how the technology works. And I really encourage you to uh, download WWPass app from App Store or Play Market and play with it yourself. And I. Mm, I'm gonna give back, um, give Mike back to Tim so that he can talk a little bit more about that. Well, yeah, I basically, a, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim, sorry. go ahead. Yeah, well, basically we were just trying to show you how easy it is to log in with your identity and start testing WWPass. So you see, you can, it takes you just five minutes to download the app from the, uh, from the store and, uh, or you can also uh, add your WWPass module to uh, to your Glue server, and uh, you can have all the all the installation uh, packages and information on the, both the Glue website and our uh, our website. You can uh, also download the necessary SDKs on our website and um, uh, or use our professional installation, basically. So, uh, well. It is very simple. It is highly secure and very convenient. So basically, if you have uh, any, any questions, uh, we will be uh, happy to answer. Yeah, so maybe I'll start off with a question. Um, could you talk maybe about a typical use case for, uh, for WWPASS? Yeah, well, uh, it's a good question. And uh, uh, like everyone using authentication uh, and uh, is more or less uh, uh, concerned about security and uh, uh, user security and the corporate security. They're trying to uh, somehow utilize um, or eliminate passwords, at least. So basically, um, uh, we are focused um, well uh, on verticals, uh, like for example, financial verticals and uh, 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 insurance security. Uh, so basically, um, there are many industries that, uh, that would like to to um, have some uh, strong authentication. Uh, uh, on-premise or in the cloud. So they can basically use it as a, a SaaS or uh, also on-prem. Um, I see, we have a question from the from the audience. Um, is WWPASS a SaaS or is it available as a self-hosted server? Yeah, uh, Kirill, no. yeah okay, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, well, by default, WWPASS is a SaaS solution but uh, for some cases, uh, like for instance, for air gapped environments or for environments that uh, do not allow connection to the internet, we also can um, we also can deploy a standalone uh, WWPass system. Um, that's always kind of a uh, project work. We need to gather requirements because the system can be configured in many different ways uh, and. 
uh, to, to support different user scenarios, but that can be done, right? And also we have uh, uh, WWPS. Um, uh, well, we already have um, like uh, most important uh, applications, like for example, Salesforce, uh, Google applications, uh, uh, Microsoft application, Zoom. Uh, actually, uh, we access in our corporate uh, Zoom through our uh, WWPS authentication. So uh, basically, uh, in these cases, uh, there are a lot of uh, use cases with these applications as well. Well, maybe I'll just ask one more question before we wrap up. Um, sorry to put you guys on the spot, but maybe you could say a few words about the roadmap. Um, what what's coming? What what should we look for next? Well, uh, from the technical standpoint, um, we actually. Um, are going to continue improving the uh, user experience of our mobile applications. Uh, we have a bunch of new, really neat uh, features uh, that right now are under development. Uh, the, the, the whole idea is to make the app more, more convenient for the end users, give them uh, more, more options. Like for instance, they can um, quickly access uh, applications they uh, authenticate often, things like that. Uh, at the same time, uh, we mm, are going to improve uh, our <clears throat> self-management tools and going to add um, more um, key uh, backup options uh, for, so that people can choose what to use depending on their, on their tasks. We're also thinking about, um, but it's not going to be uh, tomorrow, but we also think about um, supporting multiple keys, PR user accounts and all that stuff. So there's a lot that can be done and there's a lot that we can, that, that we want to do. <laughs> so pretty much like this. Yeah, yeah. And sorry, I put you guys on the spot. I know I didn't, uh, we didn't uh, tell you about that one in advance, but. I think it's interesting because it's, it's a hard topic and this is why glue is not getting into really deeply into the authentication area because it's just there's so much to do to build a really great authentication service and product and we see it as an adjacent market. So I think um, I think that pretty much covers it guys. So this video is going to be available online uh, pretty soon and um, we'll do we'll do a quick edit um, and publish it. So I want to thank you guys for the hard work in integr in writing the script for the glue server and we're looking forward to hopefully seeing lots of glue customers adopting this uh, in the community and the ecosystem so thank you so much for your time today thank you mike once again and uh, thank you glue once again so it's a it's a perfect collaboration uh, for us we we cannot do the uh, all uh, the whole package of this product without your uh, support and uh, without your product so thank you very yeah. much uh, as well as these opportunities yeah, and thanks. thanks to the participants. Okay, all right, and ending ending it now. Thank you, Mike. Thank you.